When I first began coding, I felt overwhelmed by all there is to learn. Let's face it, there always is a lot to learn. However, over time I got some great advice from mentors and I've picked up a few useful tips along the way that have made the process easier. Today I wanted to share those with you in hopes that they'll make your coding journey a lot smoother and more enjoyable. Number one, get familiar with the documentation. Now, I know you've heard this before, but hear me out, I've got a few tips. Notice I said, get familiar. Now this is because at first the documentation is going to seem very dense and difficult to understand. So when possible, start with something you already know. If you're learning a new programming language, see if you can look up how the print function is defined. This will give you lots of great information, like the general structure of the documentation. Where is this page located in comparison to the home page of the docs? This will help you map out where to find other similar functions and find your way around. The structure of the page itself and the method definition will also help you decipher other more complex topics in the documentation. This exercise will point out some gaps in your knowledge that you should also try to fill along the way. For example, if you read a method definition like this one and you're unsure of what var arg means or why there's a k and a v in the function definition, you can quickly google these terms to learn about them. Hint, search for variable arguments and Kotlin generics. The K and V stand for key and value. Then when you encounter these terms in the future, you'll already know what they mean and you'll be able to read the documentation faster. Additionally, as you might have heard, knowledge compounds over time. So at first it may seem like you're not understanding much. However, as you learn more concepts and develop your skills, you'll begin to spot patterns that will help you learn other topics much faster. Most technical documentation out there is written or structured more like a dictionary than a storybook. It's great when you can find a quick start or getting started section in the docs and definitely take advantage of those. But for the most part, documentation is meant as a reference. So investing time in learning how to get around and decipher it will pay off dividends over time. Number two, inspect the source code. Sometimes you may not get what you need from the documentation itself. Maybe it's poorly written or Maybe you're in the middle of building a feature and just really quickly want to see what other methods a certain class has to offer. Most of the time you can command click on a class or method in the IDE to view its definition. This has helped me a ton in several ways as well. For one, you can take a peek under the hood and see how the code works and what its requirements are. But you might also see what other methods are available for you to use with that particular class. Oftentimes, there will also be comments in the code that will give you more context about how those classes and methods are meant to be used. And as an added bonus, reading the source code can even teach you ways to improve the structure or style of your own code. Number three, search GitHub for examples. GitHub can often be a treasure trove of ideas and guidance. Maybe you're trying to build something not in the way that it's usually done. There's a chance someone already tried this and posted it on GitHub. Using Google or even GitHub's awesome search, you can perhaps enter a broad query that contains the framework or library that you're trying to use and find a ton of examples. From there, you can narrow down by language or even add more search terms that are specific to the thing you want to build. I can't tell you how many times I've learned a new way to do something by reading other people's code. Even reading code in other languages can often give you ideas of how to build something and widens your knowledge base. Number four, experiment. As you try out new technologies, go ahead and build dummy projects to try out what you're learning. And not only will this make you an active learner and make the process a lot less boring, but also you can upload them as repositories to your GitHub account. And then you can reference them later in future projects when you're trying to remember what you did in the past. You can even keep a side project with the sole purpose of adding things to it and experimenting. This saves you from having to build something from scratch and you might end up with an awesome portfolio piece or neat tool down the road. Bonus tip if you're learning Android development or Kotlin, Android Studio has a Kotlin REPL that you can use for quick experiments. And there's also an online Kotlin playground that even lets you share code snippets with others. See the links in the description for more details. Tip number five, Build your own personal knowledge base. Lastly, as you come across useful bits of information, it's helpful to create a system for saving and keeping track of what you learn, almost like your own personal wiki. This will save you a lot of time since you're not having to search for things from scratch 
and also helps you document what you learn. I recommend choosing a tool that has a robust search functionality. Personally, I like the Obsidian app since it allows you to use tags and even create links between your document. However, you can definitely use something like Apple Notes or Notion too. Nowadays, there's a ton of note-taking tools you can choose. Creating your personal knowledge base allows you to store your own useful nuggets of wisdom that you find along the way and can even serve as inspiration for projects or blog posts. I hope that was helpful and definitely reach out if you have any questions. Also, if you have your own tips that you want to share with others, definitely drop them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Take care.